Engines. Who doesn't love engines? They make the world go round. Sort of, literally. And the bigger, the better. That's what we say. These are the 20 biggest engines in the world. Number 20. DM884WS150. We're going to begin with an engine that many of you likely don't know about, but will appreciate by the time I'm done. This might be the most powerful engine in the world. That is, unless you just so happen to be watching this from Copenhagen over in Denmark, because then you'll know all about this engine. For those not in on the joke, this is the largest diesel engine that was ever built, which is saying something given some of the engines you're going to see later on in this video. Now, when I say that this is the largest diesel engine, I don't mean by a few inches or even by a foot. I'm talking about how this is the largest diesel engine ever built because it's four stories tall. Oh, and it's also 80 feet wide, so that should show you just how impressive it is. Also, it should be noted that this engine was built in 1932. That's right, the engine is 90 years old, and that's still not the most impressive thing about it. Because you might hear these stats and think, what in the world were they using that engine for? And the answer to that is that it was meant to power the entire city of Copenhagen in times of an emergency. Yes, they had this massive diesel engine on standby, just in case the city lost power with its main grid. Talk about having a heavy-duty backup. What's more, this wasn't something made for one year and then dumped a little while later. The DM884WS150 was kept in commission and meticulously taken care of until the year 2004, showing just how much faith that they had in the thing. Now it's on display at a museum, and if you go there you can see it fired up because it still actually works. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Is this the most powerful engine in the world? We sure think that it could be. This image of the giant engine has been going around the internet for some time now. The engine in question is a colossal diesel engine from China. Just imagine the machines that this baby could power. It looks like the sort of thing that would power Optimus Prime. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19, GE90. From an engine that powered a whole city to a set of engines that power one of the most powerful plane models in the world, we'll now talk about the GE90 engine, which is the very engine that, when multiplied, is what's used on the Boeing 777 airplane. Yes, this is an upgrade on the 747 that many of you have likely flown in as you've traveled around the world. Anyways, this engine is so powerful that during just a testing for it, it broke records, along with a lot of other things. According to GE Aviation, the 115B variant of the GE90 set a world record for thrust during its certification testing in 2002. During the 60 hours at triple red line conditions, a maximum of 127,900 lbf was achieved. That's a lot, and I don't even know what it means. Oh, and remember when I said that other things were destroyed during those tests? Well, I wasn't lying because the GE90 was so powerful, it actually caused damage to a nearby hangar that made it look like there had been a tornado that had gone through on the grounds. That's a whole lot of wind force. One account of the power of the GE90 said that it could probably throw the heaviest tank in the world about 150 feet away, as in actual military tank. Can we all just agree that this is a very frightening thing? Now you may think that this kind of power is just too much for the aircraft itself, but in fact it's not. Rather, it's needed not only to ensure that the crafts get off the ground, but can actually go around the world at really good speeds. As long as you're not behind the engines themselves, you should be just fine. If you're in the path of its thrusting power though, you're gonna go flying. Number 18. Pratt and Whitney R4360 Wasp Major. Now that's a long name for an engine, I'll grant you that, but trust me when I say that this is an important engine during a key point in world history. Specifically, it was the engine for the B-50 bomber that flew over in world 
a plane that would help to deliver all sorts of payloads to enemy encampments and vessels. The R4360 is a 28-cylinder air-cooled radial engine that produces a maximum of 3,500 horsepower and weighs approximately 3,500 pounds. R4360s have been used to power various post-world bombers, cargo transports, and aerial tankers, which includes the B-36, the B-35 Flying Wing, and the C-74 Globemaster, along with a bunch of others like the C-97 Stratofighter, the Consolidated XC-99, and the C-119 Flying Boxcar, along with the C-124 Globemaster II aircraft. Wow, what a bunch of names. When you're being used in that many aircraft, you're probably doing something right, and this engine did a lot of things right. In fact, it's one of the most complex and intricate airplane engines not only made in the United States, but reproduced in large numbers. Typically, engines for vehicles have a simplicity to them in order to ensure they work properly or can be managed easily. But this one, well, it didn't mind going on multiple levels. So why is this engine no longer used then in the world like it once was? Well, not surprisingly, it was eventually surpassed by other models, but considering how long that it lasted, it's not a blemish on its record at all. Rather, it should be honored that it was able to help the United States and others for a very long time and is honored today by being displayed in museums. Number 17. The Wartzilla RT Flex 96C. You will begin to notice that engine names aren't exactly the most simple of things, because I'm definitely starting to notice that myself. This engine carries the distinction of being the world's largest engine. Remember, the first engine was the largest diesel engine. How large is large, you may ask? Well, for starters, each of the 14 cylinders it carries has a displacement of 111,143 cubic inches, which is about 1,820 liters that produce over 7,000 horsepower and that's just in one. Add up all 14 cylinders and you've got a total displacement of 1,556,002 cubic inches, which is 25,480 liters, and this baby puts out a maximum power of 108,920 horsepower at 102 RPMs with a peak torque of 5,608,312 pounds per foot at 102 RPMs. Can you say that's a whole lot of horsepower? Because trust me, it's a whole lot of horsepower. As for the raw stats of how big it is, it rises 40 feet above the ground, measuring 89 feet long. And that's not only big, it's actually massive, and indeed does beat the first entry by a long shot. The last super large engine was used to power a city in times of need, but what about this one? Well, it was custom made to power a container ship, the largest in the world at the time. But here's the funny part about it. Even though it has all that size and power, it takes all of it to power the ship. Plus, it's not exactly good on fuel consumption as it still uses up 1,660 gallons of heavy fuel oil per hour. That should give you some indication of just how much you need in terms of size and power to move a large boat. Most people know that they have engines, but rarely do they think about the sheer size and strength of them. Hopefully though, this will give you some more perspective and appreciation for them. Number 16. Union Pacific 4014. So far I've talked about a city engine, a boat engine, and a plane engine twice over, and now I'm going to talk about a train engine, specifically a steam train engine referred to as the Union Pacific 4014. Remember back in the day the train's head was the engine, hence why there were always people at the front of the train, not just conducting it, but also feeding it with coal so that it would keep on going. This train had the nickname of Big Boy. 25 Big Boys were built exclusively for Union Pacific Railroad. The first of which would be delivered in 1941. The locomotives were 132 feet long, weighing in at 1.2 million pounds, and their size could have hurt their functionality overall, but they used hinged frames in order to help them get around curves in the track. There are seven big boys on display in various cities around the country. They can include and be found in St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, Omaha, Nebraska, Denver, Colorado, Scranton, Pennsylvania, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Cheyenne, Wyoming. 
there is your geography tour. The one that I'm specifically naming in this entry served from 1941 to 1961, a proud 20 years of service, of which it traveled over 1 million miles for the company that it was commissioned for. But wait, there's more. After it was shut down, it was recommissioned in 2019 and then put back into service, showing that trains like this can always help out so long as you make them run correctly. Train engines as a whole are a fascinating thing, and we should all be appreciative that they've advanced well beyond the coal engines of the past as they weren't the best for the environment. But we can all get to the magnet trains level and that would be awesome. Number 15. Halliade X12MW I hope that you can see now that there are well and truly all kinds of engines living in the world today, and some of them are being built to try and stop the need of other engines. The Halley 8 X12 MW is a great example of this, as this is a wind turbine engine. You know, as in the ones that are meant to help create renewable energy all across the board, those giant windmills that you sometimes see near your home or in big cities are likely powered by something like this. The Holly 8X offshore turbine features a 14MW, 13MW, or 12MW capacity with a 220 meter rotor, a 107 meter blade, and digital capabilities. Having been independently certified at up to 13.6MW of output, and for a typhoon condition, making it the only turbine bankable for customers seeking to finance projects. It also features a 60-64% to 64 capacity factor above industry standards. Capacity factor compares how much energy would be generated against the maximum that could have been produced at continuous full power operations during a specific period of time. And due to how it's built, it's able to make the most of the energy that it can renew even if the wind itself is not at the highest of speeds. Which is good, because obviously the wind isn't going to be blowing every day at the highest velocity. To give you a little more definitive example of how effective it can be, the wind turbine is able to produce enough energy to save 52,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide from being put up into the atmosphere. That's the amount of CO2 that 11,000 cars combined would produce in a single year. And one turbine did that. So now, just imagine if we could get them around the world and hopefully cleaning up the planet, or we could actually go bigger and make an even better engine. Number 14. Ferrari Turbocharged V6 F1 Engine now, I've made you wait long enough, so we'll talk about a car engine. Specifically, we're talking about a very popular car brand and the engine that will be within it more than likely when you see it on the track. I'm speaking about the Ferrari turbocharged V6 F1 engine, an engine that would be built in 2014 and is still in use to this day. The engine itself is coupled with an energy recovery system hybrid unit, and all evolutions and newer iterations of the power unit are based on the same basic hybrid architecture that's existed since 2014. These engines were made for the Formula One series, which as you hopefully know are some of the fastest cars in the whole world. Ever since they made it, they've been slowly improving upon it, but as noted, it's all still based on the turbocharged V6 F1 that was made all the way back in 2014. However, there's a small twist in this, because in 2019, one of the newer versions of the engine caused a lot of controversy when Ferrari was suddenly dominating the track and wasn't clear as to why. Apparently, they rigged a sensor to the engine to not show off the illegal fuel flow that the car was giving out. When officials called this out, for Ferrari was then forced to change it, and they didn't win a single race or even a pole position in the year 2019 without it. Let that be a lesson to you kids. If a car company can cheat to try and make an engine better, they'll absolutely do it. Number 13. Caterpillar C175 when it comes to the various types of construction that various men and women work in, you need to have heavy-duty equipment to help you get the job done. And that's why the Caterpillar line of engines and vehicles are often hailed as some of the best because they absolutely can get the job done. 
The Caterpillar C-175 is one such example of that, and it's used for mining trucks that can carry over 400 tons of stuff, mainly dirt, from a mine site. Just to give you the scope of not just its size, but its power output as well, the engine has enough power to run more than 350 average American homes, according to the federal government. In fact, a single C-175-20 engine is powering the entire island of Mustique in the Caribbean. That's both very impressive and also quite scary. Ironically though, it's a biodiesel system that was configured to ensure that it wouldn't consume the largest amount of fuel possible, as you would expect from a certain mining equipment. Plus, it can endure cold weather much better than certain other engines and equipment, and even has different levels of output that it can deliver when it's in a pinch. These engines are vital to workers on various sites, so for them to know that the engine will keep going and deliver the power it needs is a relief more times than not. Number 12. Koenigsegg 5.0 liter V8. Koenigsegg revealed a 600 horsepower naturally aspirated engine at the Geneva Motor Show back in 2018, meant for one of their supercars that they were developing called the One. The engine produces 600 horsepower at 8,000 RPMs, and that figure is 50 more than the supercharged 5.4 liter that Ford used in the 2004 to 2006 GT. The engine was not only meant for a supercar, but it also showcases just how far that car companies are willing to go in order to boost their engine's performance to the absolute limit, and then go well beyond it. The Koenigsegg 5.0 liter V8, for example, was built to be something based on a previous Ford engine, but after a while they had to scrap it and go to a much different model to get the performance they desired. There's a reason that the car engine game is so important. It's not just your competitors that you're going up against, it's basically yourself. Because if your engine and your car don't live up to the expectations of others out there, then you kinda just wasted everyone's time and money now, didn't you? The supercar that I mentioned before is now out, and Koenigsegg is obviously very proud of what they created, and they're hoping that they'll continue to make their engines shine and put out as much power as possible in order to get things done. What will their next build be like? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Number 11. Viper Engine now, doesn't that just sound uber powerful? The Viper engine. It screams, this is a good engine that you need in your vehicle. And there are many out there that are thankfully because they do indeed have it in their ride. Equally as important though is that the Viper engine has had a very long history in cars. The Viper V10 was based on the Chrysler LA engine family and appeared with the Dodge Viper in 1992. It was conceived and prototyped as a Magnum 5.9 with two extra cylinders and a longer stroke of 3.88 inches. Fast forward to the 2013 SRT Viper and it further boosted power to 640 horsepower at 6,150 RPM and 600 foot-pounds of torque at 4,950 RPM. Since 2015, power was raised up to 645 horsepower at 6,200 RPM. And as you can see via the pictures that exist, this is one really sick engine and it's one that's definitely seen some improvements over the years. As I've already shown you, it's it's not just about having a good engine, it's about how you grow it over the years and then eke out that extra performance to ensure that you can get the absolute most out of it. And also, the name obviously helps out. Viper Engine really does scream dope name for an engine, and that's why they've used it for so many years. Number 10. Shockwave. Now, I have something very special for you since we're in the top 10. First up is the Shockwave. But what is that? Well, it's a freaking jet truck. Yes, those do exist, and they put on quite the show at various places across the United States. It currently holds the world record for jet-powered full-size trucks at 376 miles per hour. The truck had three Westinghouse J3448 jet engines with a total output of 36,000 horsepower, which allowed the truck to complete the quarter mile in just 6.63 seconds. Now I'm all for massive trucks having a whole lot of power if it helps them get down the road better and also stops them from holding up other cars on the highway, but a freaking jet truck? That's just insane. Yet not only is this a thing, there's actually a family of these trucks out there, each with their own powerful engines guiding them along at extreme speeds. 
Number 9. Balaz 75710. What is the Balaz 75710? Well, that is the question, isn't it? The answer is not what you may think, as it's actually a dump truck that you can find in use in Belarus. Yep, a dump truck has one of the largest and most powerful engines in the world. What a world we live in. With a hauling capacity of 450 tons, it can actually carry 87 tons more than the current record holder. Now, believe it or not, this ride was made to better handle the rising costs of using heavy machinery, and so they made the vehicle and put the best engine possible within it to move the most amount of dirt and other materials so that it wouldn't bleed them dry as they get to the good stuff. Just goes to show you that even when you're making guaranteed money, you want to save it where you can. Number 8. Kawasaki Ninja H2R. It did take me a while, but now I'm going to be looking at a really crazy, awesome motorcycle engine. Kawasaki manufactures some of the world's most sophisticated piece of machinery, and the Ninja H2 is among them. The Ninja H2R is the fastest Kawasaki to date, and is currently the flagship offering from the Japanese manufacturer. When launched, the H2 revolutionized the way that motorcycles were engineered with several accolades adorning this beast of a machine. And if you want to know just how much power the thing puts out, it's powerful enough to outpace the fastest street legal ride out there by over 50%, with a top speed of 250 miles per hour. Now, if you get on this bike, you will be flying, and that's exactly why it was made. Just to be clear, I mean fly as fly down the street. Number 7. Bluebird K7 now I'll talk about a powerful engine that wasn't exactly put in the best of vehicles. You see, there was a movement decades back to get unique kinds of aircraft out into the world, and that also included the creation of hydroplanes. The Bluebird K7 was one such attempt to try and make that happen. On the plus side, it did have a creative design and would inspire certain kinds of innovations in the future. However, since we're not seeing this all over the world right now, it clearly was not a success on its own, mainly because it crashed in a test and would not be recovered until 2000. Sometimes you have to go fast and try hard in order to try and make things work. Number 6. 671 Gray Marine Diesel Engine if you're looking for something that has some longevity, it needs to prove that it can work across many decades and in a lot of ways. The 671 Gray Marine diesel engine is an example of that happening, because the engine would first be used as one for landing craft in World War II, but you'll still see it in use today as you can find it in boats and even training facilities all over. That is some ultimate staying power right there. What's just as important is that they were used a lot when they were first made, as the original set was manufactured over 100,000 times. Just think about that. You don't make 100,000 of anything unless you know that it's going to work, and the 671 Gray Marine diesel engine certainly did, and still does. Number 5. Thrust SSC at this point, you probably know that the SSC in Thrust SSC is to mean something, right? Well, it does. It stands for supersonic car, or in this case, it's actually a jet car. Yes, another one of those. Thrust SSC holds the world land and speed record that was set on the 15th of October 1997 when it achieved a speed of 763 miles per hour, becoming the first land vehicle to officially break the sound barrier. Oh yes, this was a car, or jet car to be more accurate, that went so fast that it actually broke the sound barrier. And that's not only an incredible amount of speed, but it goes to showcase just how crazy that some people are in regards to wanting to drive the fastest cars around. The car would be driven by the Royal Air Force Fighter Pilot Wing Commander Andy Green in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada when the record was completed. Number 4. Bloodhound SSC 
And if you thought that I was done with such vehicles that could break the speed of sound, well you've learned nothing about humanity, because every time that a record is made, someone sets out to break it, and they always have to do better over the guy under them. The Bloodhound SSC is a British supersonic land vehicle currently in development. Its goal is to match or even exceed the previously mentioned 763 miles per hour, achieving a new world land speed record. The pencil-shaped car powered by a jet engine and a rocket engine is definitely going to be something to watch and behold once it gets done. And why any of this has to happen and be done is well beyond anything that I can comprehend. Just seems like a waste of money and time to me. But if life has taught us anything, they'll find a way to make everything go faster. Number 3. Y2K Turbine Motorcycle there's another designation for this ride, it's that of Superbike, and that's exactly what this bike is due to the engine and power that it can exert. But there's a twist here, and that one must be noted. Unlike many rides on this list, this is not one that you can just go into a store, even a high-end store, and just buy. Rather, you have to actually have one custom built for you. You'll give the team the specifications you want for the ride, and then you'll get your bike eventually, so you can actually tweak the performance to ensure that the engine is better than anyone else's. Competition, isn't it grand? A turbine engine is used for the bike to help it achieve some very impressive speeds. Due to all that goes into it though, it holds a world record for the most expensive production motorcycle out there. Number 2. Brutus Meet the vehicle that was experimental in all kinds of ways and was very much a car of its time. By that I mean that it was a car project that was made after World War I and used the limitations that were put upon Germany at the time to make a ride that would not be forgotten. Specifically though, it was BMW who would make this ride and took the engine from a plane and put it into the body of a 1908 American LaFrance chassis just to make a racing vehicle out of it. On the account of its 12-cylinder 46-liter engine and generally terrifying looks, the BMW techs christened it Brutus. Obviously, Brutus never was mass-produced, but just look at the thing, it is indeed something to behold and appreciate, even if history won't remember it as much as car fans do. Number 1. Future Engines I've shown you quite the gambit of engines during this video, so the question then becomes, what's next? Well, I wanted to end the video on this right now because there are new engines that are being built all the time. Equally as important though, they aren't all gas engines. Some of them are electric, like the ones being made for certain electric cars, and this is easily one of the biggest engineering challenges of our time because humanity, for the last 120 years, has pretty much been reliant on gas engines to get us everywhere. But now things are changing and hopefully it's for the better. Only time will tell, but if they can make electric engines or even hydrogen ones run everything, the world may be a better place. That's all from the realm of engines and their incredible power. Were you amazed by the ones that I showed you and the awesome power that they wielded? And which of these engines were you most amazed by when you saw them? Do you know of any others that should be on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.